What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and now that we have iOS 14, iOS 14.0.1, and iOS 14.2 beta all being released, I wanted to give you guys an update as to how each one of these software versions have been running for not just me, but also for you guys based on your comments and messages on social media. So in this video, we're gonna cover any additional new features or changes in these updates, the performance, the battery life, the bugs, the bug fixes, and we're also gonna discuss what's next and you know what we can expect next from Apple next week with iOS releases. So let's start off with iOS 14.0.1, since that is the most recent release, and it's probably what most of you guys are running right now, at least based on the community poll on my channel. So this was just released a few days ago on Thursday, and I've been using it every day so far on my main device here, the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And so far, it's actually been pretty good. So if you guys saw my What's New video, you would know that upon installing 14.0.1 like right when i installed it i had issues instantly with my airpods so i had to like reconnect them they just completely were not recognized by the device and i had multiple other issues as well right when i installed 14.0.1 on my main device here but since then things have actually been great and i've not had any other issues since now in that what's new video for 14.0.1 i did say that the airpods notification bug was fixed but it actually has not been fixed. It just doesn't appear when you're listening to music. So when you have your AirPods in and you're listening to music and you lock your phone and then you come back from the lock screen, you won't see the notification if you're listening to music. But if you're not listening to music and you have your AirPods in, you will still get that notification that comes down every time you unlock your device, which once again is pretty annoying. So part of me thinks that this is by design and another part of me thinks that it's actually a bug. But whatever the case may be, I hope that this goes away because I don't really need to know that my AirPods are connected to this device every single time I unlock it. Now, aside from that, I have also been having some issues with Apple Music on 14.0.1 and I did not have these at all on iOS 14 throughout all the beta stages over months. I never had issues with Apple Music. And then for some reason over the past two days, I've had some pretty annoying issues with Apple Music. So sometimes it just simply would not play. Like I would pause it and play it, you know, try to fix it by pausing and playing it again. And the music just wouldn't play. I would try going to a different track. Same thing, it wouldn't play. And of course this could be an issue with Apple Music or an issue with the connection, but I didn't have that issue at all on iOS 14, like in general. So it's weird that this happened after 14.0.1. I'm not sure if it's a coincidence with something happening with Apple Music going down or something like that, but I have had issues with Apple Music over the past couple of days. But to be fair, it only lasts a good minute and then it goes back to normal. So it's not like it's prolonged and I have to reboot my device or anything. It's just, you know, minor issues with Apple Music and it doesn't last very long. Now, speaking of issues with audio, I have also had some minor issues with the YouTube application. And when I go to play a video in the background, sometimes when I go back, you know, since I have YouTube Premium, I can still hear the audio in the background. But when I open up another application, it lags. You can hear like a cut in the audio on 14.0.1. So that's kind of annoying and that could be an issue with the YouTube application. But again, I didn't have that on 14.0. So that makes me think it's an issue with 14.0.1. Now, of course, I could not make a follow-up video without mentioning the keyboard lag. So a lot of people request me talk about this and a lot of people tell me they have these issues and I actually started facing it for the first time on 14.0.1. So sometimes when I would first go into the messages application, I would try to type, there would be a minor delay, like a two second delay and nothing would show up that I just typed and then it just lags and shows up, you know, a second or two later. So I am now having that keyboard lag on 14.0.1. It's nothing major and it doesn't last too long, but I would imagine if you have an older device and especially if you don't have a lot of storage space remaining, then it's probably gonna be even more annoying and last even longer for you to lag. It's just going to be worse depending on, you know, how old your device is and how little storage you may have remaining. But for me, it's not a huge deal. It is something I noticed and it was, you know, kind of annoying just because I'm used to everything being so fast, but it's not anything major. And once again, this is not an issue necessarily with iOS 14, even though I did, you know, just get this in 14.0.1, but keep in mind that people have been reporting this since iOS 13.5 or 13.6, something like that. So it's not necessarily an issue with iOS 14, but it may just be a coincidence that I started getting that issue now with 14.0.1. Now, some people have also reported that the picture-in-picture -picture just simply does not work on their device. 
Now, if you're talking about YouTube with picture in picture, YouTube actually disabled that feature themselves. I'm not too sure why it's probably just temporarily. And of course it's not going to work in the YouTube app either, unless you have that shortcut. And even that sometimes won't work. So there are issues with YouTube and picture in picture and also showing 4k videos that doesn't show up for everybody. There's a lot of issues with YouTube and picture in picture, but that's mainly on the YouTube application. That's fully on the YouTube application that does not have to do with Apple software. Now, as far as the widgets go, widgets are running perfectly fine so far on 14.0.1, really no issues whatsoever. And I also have no issues with, you know, clock being off or anything like that. Now there are issues with widget Smith. If you do have widget Smith, sometimes the clock can be a little bit off. Of course, this is a third party widget, so you can't expect bugs and, and issues and things like that. And another thing I wanted to mention as well about widget Smith is that if you have a bunch of widget Smith, widgets on your home screen, you're probably going to face some pretty massive battery drain because this is, you know, relying on a third party application and, you know, third party APIs and things like that, that it's pulling from constantly. So I would just be aware, don't use a ton of these widget Smith widgets, uh, you know, even just regular Apple widgets, I wouldn't use a ton of, but those are safer than something like a third party widget right here. So just be careful with it. I know your device can look cool, but just know that it can also drain your battery. And as far as the iPad goes and iPad OS 14.0.1, there is still the issue remaining where widgets will sometimes turn small and the app icons will turn small as well. And they will be like iPhone size. So that was a bug in 14 iOS 14, and it still remains in 14.0.1. Now it seems like I talked about a lot of bugs on iOS 14.0.1, but it's because I talked about the bug fixes in my what's new video. So of course 14.0.1 does fix a lot of bugs that were in iOS 14. So don't think that just because I mentioned the bugs, that doesn't mean anything was fixed. iOS 14.0.1 undoubtedly fixed more issues than it caused or created. So just keep that in mind. Now, as far as the overall performance goes on iOS 14.0.1, I've actually had a better experience on 14.0.1 than I did on iOS 14. So it seems like the multitasking is faster and smoother. Even the boot up time, you know, the few times that I've booted my phone up, it seems faster on 14.0.1. And that's something that I never really check or test. So I'd be interested to see if you guys notice faster boot up times on 14.0.1 as well. But anyways, the multitasking, playing games, just your average everyday things just feel a little bit smoother here on 14.0.1. Nothing major, but since I test these all day, every day, I do notice the small things. And then also there are a lot of people saying that the performance is better as well, but just keep in mind that it could be placebo for a lot of people. But as far as battery life goes, that is one thing where it's probably not placebo and it's actually better here in 14.0.1. So a lot more people than not said that battery life is better in this new update versus iOS 14.0, which makes a lot of sense. So if you were having bad battery life on iOS 14, simply updating to 14.0.1 could help improve your battery life. I've noticed that I get at least 30 to 40 more minutes of screen on time with iOS 14.0.1 versus iOS 14, which is a pretty nice improvement if you ask me. Now, as far as iOS 14.0, if you still have not updated to 14.0.1, I'd say now it's safe to update. There's really no downside to updating to 14.0.1. The only bad thing to me was that I just got the keyboard lag, which once again, that may not even be related to 14.0.1. I just started noticing it on this update. So if you're still on iOS 14 for some reason, I think it's safe now to go ahead and update to 14.0.1. Now, as far as iOS 14.2 beta one goes, this is actually running pretty smooth as well here on my iPhone 11 Pro. Now this was the device I customized, so it doesn't run as fast now since I did all these, you know, custom icons and crazy widgets and things like that, which by the way, if you guys didn't see my video on how to do this and have a custom charging sound and things like that, I will leave that linked up in the cards and down in the description below. But iOS 14.2 does not fix the notification bug for the AirPods. And once again, I don't even think I should be calling this a bug because I think it is, you know, how it's supposed to be. It's intended behavior there to have that every single time you unlock your phone, just because you are connecting to multiple phones, you know, whatever one plays music is going to be the one connected. So it makes you, you know, makes you aware that this is the phone using the AirPods. So I understand the logic behind showing that pop up every time, but it's still annoying. And I wish there was maybe a toggle to turn that on or off, you know, so that's still here in 14.2 beta one. And like I said, probably expected behavior, but still I hope Apple gets rid of that. But yeah, so far I love iOS 14.2 and all of the music changes. So I like how the lock screen looks different and everything like that. Now I don't like how they got rid of the beginning and end times on the music here. So of course it only shows, you know, the sound, the time you're playing right there. It shows at 136 instead of showing the beginning and the ending, like how much time is remaining. 
So I hope they fix that. I hope it reverts back to how it was in 14.0 and pretty much every other iOS version. I think this is kind of annoying just to show that and not show the actual length of the song. So that's one gripe I have with 14.2, but everything else I love. I love all the new music features and all the control center changes and things like that. And really no complaints with iOS 14.2 beta one. And as far as when we can expect iOS 14.2 beta two, that is probably coming next week. So if we go into the calendar right here, the week of the 28th is probably when I would expect to see iOS 14.2 beta two. So we'll probably see it on either the 29th or the 30th. If I had to guess, it would be one of those two days, the Tuesday or the Wednesday. I think we will get it before October starts, hopefully. And then of course, October is going to be a crazy busy month with the iPhone announcements and probably another iOS 14 release, 14.1, 14.0.2, something like that. Of course, I will be keeping you guys in the loop on Twitter and here on my channel as well. And then finally, let's go ahead and take a look at the community poll for this week. So you can see here I asked, which iOS 14 version are you currently on and how has it been running for you? So this of course is in the community tab on my channel. And so far in the three hours since I posted it, we got 11,000 votes and 231 comments. So you can see 38% are on iOS 14, 49% on 14.0.1 and 13% on iOS 14.2 beta. So once again, most people are on 14.0.1 and those on iOS 14, unless you're trying to jailbreak or something like that, I would just go ahead and update to 14.0.1 whenever you can. But anyways, taking a look at some of these comments here, you can see Ryan said it's a bit faster and has a bit better battery life on 14.0.1. You can see 41 people thumbs that up in two hours. So a lot of people agree there as well. So better performance and better battery life, which is always great to see. Caden says, I'm on iOS 14.0.1 and it is running smoothly. I've noticed no bugs yet. So once again, great to hear. Some glitches with keyboard on iMessage and switching between apps. So that's what I was talking about with the keyboard lag. A lot of people have been reporting this since iOS 13 and it looks like it's still present here in 14.0.1. So here's Michael chiming in with an iPhone 6S. He says that the performance and the battery life were a little bit less than the stability on 13. So he's saying everything's not as good as iOS 13 yet, but he says 14.0.1 is running better than the original iOS 14. So that's good to hear from an iPhone 6S user there. Los Farmos here said that he's on 14.2 and he says the new features are great, but he would not recommend actually updating to it if you cannot deal with a lot of the bugs on that update. So yeah, it is a beta update. So anytime I say that things are good with a beta update, that doesn't mean there's gonna be no bugs, it's a beta. Betas are always going to have bugs and issues. When I say that it's good for a beta, I simply mean that it's good for a beta and it doesn't have you know things that are gonna reboot your device or brick your device or anything like that. So 14.2, of course, don't update to that unless you have you know a device meant for beta testing and things like that. So another comment here said, for some reason my volume is up or it keeps turning down on my 11 Pro Max. So you may actually have something set in your accessibility settings for that. And somebody also said they may be pressing the headphone jack volume button. So I'm not sure what he's talking about headphone jack volume button there, but yeah, so you could have an, uh, something enabled inside of settings. So if you go to your settings and then go to accessibility. So the setting I was looking for wasn't actually in accessibility, but it's in music right here and then uh, sound check. So that may be enabled or disabled. I would look into that but it could also just be an issue with maybe something you don't even realize you're doing. Like sometimes I will just scroll the crown on my Apple Watch and that will turn down my music. So it could be something as simple as that. So someone here says that they have a 10S and they have a blue tent bug on 14.0.1. So I've not heard of that. So if you're having any type of tent bug, so I know the green tent bug was an issue back on iOS 13. So hopefully we're not having another issue with a tent you know, issue there on iOS 14.0.1. Somebody said they're experiencing a lot of bugs with the AirPods Pro. So that's interesting. I've not really had any bugs with that. And you can see here, other people are saying it lags. Other people are saying it, it's great. A lot of mixed results as it usually is, but most of them are positive about both 14.0.1 and 14. And then some people are saying they're having issues with 14.2 beta, which it's a beta. So it's expected to be, you know, buggy and things like that. So if you guys want to read all the comments, you can over here on the community tab. And thank you to everybody who voted and who left a comment. I appreciate you guys. It helps me bring more information to everybody who watches these videos. Anyways, that is pretty much it for this video, guys. That was just a follow-up review on iOS 14, 14.0.1, and iOS 14.2 beta. And once again, if you guys are not on 14.0.1, it's pretty safe to go ahead and update unless you're just having absolutely no issues on iOS 14. That's really the only time I would recommend you just to stay put. 
but for most people, you probably wanna go ahead and update to 14.0.1. And I would not update to iOS 14.2 beta unless it's not your main device, unless you have like a testing device to use it on, just simply because it is a beta and you will have bugs. But yeah, guys, I'm curious to know how these software versions are running for you. Let me know down in the comment below what version you're on and how it's running for you. I am very curious to see your guys' thoughts. And of course, if you found any other features or changes in any of these updates, let me know down in the comment below and I may you know, talk about it in my next video. And of course, as always, if you guys do appreciate these videos, I would appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up and of course, subscribe for a lot more iOS 14 content here on the channel. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.